Hello everybody, uh, thanks very much for coming to listen to the talk. Just uh, to let you know, I am the newest and youngest member of the transport team and I, uh, I am a, a paediatric uh, anaesthetist and I, I, I work for transport and spend a day a week in ICU. I wouldn't call myself an intensivist certainly, but I, I'm definitely one of the anaesthetists, but without the cape that Julie had said, I can't find it anywhere. So hopefully I'll tell you something today that helps you out when you've got the next sick baby in front of you and you're waiting for our team to arrive. Um, I suspect we've got quite a mixed audience, so consultants, trainees, nursing staff. I suspect almost all of you will know what's in this talk, but maybe it's useful a <coughs> memoir for when the baby or child in front of you is there and you're thinking about what fluid to give. I'm going to keep my talk fairly simple. I'm going to focus on which fluid, how much of it, and then reiterate those things again. <clears throat> uh, our clinical nurse educator, Anne, who's at the back there, has done an extensive literature search for me for this. So all of my references are very kindly worked out by uh, Anne. And so hopefully things are very up to date for you. And I've included them at the end. This is a very wordy summary saying from the New England Journal of Medicine telling us what fluid we should use. And the very bottom line of it is there is no such fluid available. OK, so um, nothing we have is ideal. So what can we actually do? What, what is in front of us? Well, I think the answer would be to start with crystalloid unless your child is bleeding and then start with blood um, think about albumin and then move along to blood uh, if you've reached the end of that. Whatever you do, don't give hypotonic fluids. This is a picture of my certificate um, from the BMJ that we've all got to do for our CPD. I don't, I'm not going to labour that point in this talk. I think that's been done and, and we all know not to give hypotonic fluids. This is a further wordy slide that says don't give hypotonic fluid. So what does it actually leave us with? Well, choices are small here, really, uh, and that nothing is perfect. Um, normal saline, first choice, first thing I would go for as well, generally, okay. Hartman's solution and 4% albumin. Plasma light 148, if your clinical director uh, has approved you the budget, Jeremy Lyons in the front row, uh, Stuart Symington down there at the back, these, this is new and exciting and expensive uh, and potentially an avenue for the future. Hydroxyethyl starch, I've put my views quite clearly there on that. No, no, no again, okay, and then blood products. This is a little summary of what's in all the fluids that we, we've all, a lot of us have had to look at for our exams. <laughs> The key thing there is the serum is what's on the left and our ideal fluid would exactly match that. And the problem with saline, which is what's recommended by NICE, is that it's got more sodium and more chloride and not a lot else in it that matches, matches our plasma. And the nice thing about plasma light, so it's again got normal values there on the left and plasma light on the right, is that it more closely matches but is still not ideal. The other nice thing about it is that it, it, doesn't have, it, it, it doesn't have the lactate in it that Hartman's does. So moving on then, what does the literature say about which fluid we should use? So I've started with the most recent references first for this. This is an adult study in 2019. It said that crystalloids are less effective than colloids at stabilizing resuscitation endpoints, okay? And guidance on when to switch is required. So, Call out is better, but when do you switch? We don't know. In 2018, uh, Silva just basically stated that hypotensive resuscitation with blood is the best approach, but there remains a question over the best approach in septic shock. And I'm going to go through a couple of studies here that are very big in paediatrics that a lot of paediatricians will know about, about conservative, man about conservative treatment with fluids um, in paediatrics. Okay. And really, conservative might be better. Cochrane did a review in 2018. A lot of these things are from adults. And unless I have said pediatrics, this is, a lot of it is adult base. Um, they said there's really no difference in mortality, but starches increase the need uh, for blood transfusion and renal replacement therapy. So once again, hydroxyethyl starches were not so keen. 
NICE have some guidelines about IV therapy in children and young people, and this is mainly what we follow. And it, it's, it basically says try and match plasma and either give a 10 or a 20 mil per kilo bolus. Um, and beware of cardiac disease and other problems in your children. And if it's a term neonate, glucose free for your boluses. So that's an easy trap to fall into when you're stressed and you're resuscitating a sick baby. You've got a maintenance fluids running to keep your baby's sugars up and someone asks for a fluid bolus and you're the nurse working there and they say, can you give me 10 mils per kilo of this? And the nurse plugs it into the, into the pump or the junior anaesthetist and you've given a bolus of dextrose containing fluid. So just be careful about that. Again, another review in 2013, don't use starch. It increases your risk of acute kidney injury and renal and needing and having problems with your kidneys. And again, there's no evidence that any one colloid is better than the other if you are going to choose colloid. I've kept this to the very bare minimum, the big point that I've taken from these studies. You can read them all yourselves if you like at the end, but the, these are the key messages for me, what I have got out of reading these. And uh, so one of the oldest ones I have here, there's a, you know, normal saline isn't that great. A balanced salt solution would be better. Normal saline and 4% albumin both give you a hyperchloremia and that re results in an acidosis. Okay? You get a rising base excess and it's a common error to fall into. You give a normal saline bolus, you give another, you find that your gas is worse, they're more acidotic, their base excess is higher, so you give another fluid bolus and your gas is worse again and you're chasing a fluid bolus but actually the problem is chloride and that is the problem and that's why you get this rising base excess so be careful of that and uh, then there's a study in 2004 it's an adult study and it's talking about really saline versus albumin and which is better similar outcomes at 28 days but there was a non-statistically significant difference um, which showed albumin might have an improved in outcome in a very severe sepsis subgroup old study now and here is what's new and exciting um, plasma light 148 it is isotonic it's buffered crystalloid it's got physiochemical composition close to reflecting human plasma it's not currently the recommended fluid for resuscitation by nice and children not currently so that answers which fluid is anyone any the wiser probably not um, I think the answer is start with saline, move to 4% uh, albumin if you can, monitor your blood gases and watch for hyperchloremia and think about blood whenever you've given as much fluid as you feel you can tolerate. How much fluid is as much as you need then? Well that's the next question. Is there an arbitrary figure for the boluses that you give first of all and what should you take into account in seeing how much more you need? So quite, quite recently I was out for a trans, uh, transport call and a little baby had been given 80, per kilo of, 80 mils per kilo of IV fluid and quite rightly the team were worried about that but actually that's what that baby needed uh, and I'm going to take you through a little bit about how much you should give. So I've already talked in some of the references about how much you give and, and NICE are sort of saying either 10 or 20 mils per kilo and either give it as a push or over 10 to 20 minutes, a bit like baby bear's porridge, not too much, not too little, just the right amount. Again, going through the literature again, um, if they are bleeding, give them blood and give them the dose that they have lost. Okay. Um, if I'm giving blood, I start with 10 mils per kilo as a bolus and try and put it through a warmer. Uh, the sort of a, still a question about what's best to do if the child is septic and conservative fluid management is starting to look like the answer it's better to give a balanced crystalloid or albumin as your alternative to saline Cochrane reviewed this in 2018 and this is all in the back of a study which I'm coming to which was earlier called the uh, face study so Basically, a subgroup of African children um, were given fluid and they were either given liberal or minimal fluid and the, the children who had conservative therapy seemed to do better. 
It is an important point to note that this was a very different population than what we have. The high malaria burden and, and things are quite different, but a lot of this work came off the back of that because quite rightly people were worried that we are given too much fluid, that, that our children would do better if they had a more conservative management approach, even in sepsis. So Cochrane looked at it in 2018, liberal versus conservative fluid therapy, and their conclusion was that they needed more studies, which is very helpful. Um, two said liberal regime increased mortality and one was of poor quality. Uh, in 2017, the American College of Critical Care Medicine in paediatric and neonatal shock said that they felt 20 mils per kilo boluses were appropriate if you had sepsis. And again, this is the same NICE guideline I put up under which fluid. It's saying 10 to 20, watch out for your cardiac failure and uh, in your term neonates, don't use glucose for your boluses. And this is the study I was talking about that happened in, in third world, sort of different population. Some controversy over that study as how it, how it really trans, how, it, how we can translate that into our practice. So in terms of how much fluid, um, I don't know if you're any wiser after reading the literature, but what I do and what most of my colleagues would do is I would give a 10 per kilo bolus unless the child looked really dreadful and reassess and give another and reassess and give another and reassess if I need it. How do you, how do, you do this reassessing? What does that actually mean? Um, well, I want to see what I think the child's volume status is. Do they look as if they need more fluid? Do they look as if they're euvolemic? Or do they look as if they're starting to, to be difficult to ventilate, get crackles in their chest? Do they look as if I, they're tipping over into being overfilled? And then I also have to think about maintenance requirements. Don't forget about that either. Septic patient, small baby, needs a little bit of glucose. So try and calculate your maintenance. When I go to a call, I usually try and start the maintenance at two thirds of their requirement and, you, and leave that running and let my boluses on top of that. And that way I'm sure the child's still getting some sugar. <coughs> How do I say it? Well, heart rate's a reasonable indicator. Um, give your bolus and reassess at any number, any, any rate come off your heart rate. Check for capillary refill. Look at their mucous membranes. That's a very soft sign and quite difficult to look at, especially if you're a trainee or you're someone who maybe hasn't seen a lot of very sick children. Um, more commonly, a, and a really useful thing to do is to push on the liver and see if your blood pressure or your heart, rate, your heart rate falls, your blood pressure rises, or lift their legs. It's simple things that really work very well. Um, for anyone who has any access to sort of intensive care or the, the people, you might hear about people talking about a swing in an art line. So the art lines inside the, the art, artery, um, they're, they're talking about when it looks as if it's moving like a seesaw. Now, if your child is spontaneously ventilating, you will see that happen anyway with respiratory pattern. Swing in an art line only applies in a paralyzed child who's invasively ventilated. And then what you're seeing is a change in venous return in your empty patient because of the, of the pressure of the ventilator. I would tell you that if you're seeing a swing in your, in your art line and you're not sure what you're looking at, try giving them a bit of pressure on their liver or lifting their leg and seeing does that change things as well if you don't know what's going on. And blood pressure is a pre-terminal sign generally. It's quite late in falling. Again, uh, I'm not going to go through lots of the literature about how to assess fluid status, I, I really only have this one slide. Um, but I think the key point here is that bottom line is that blood pressure doesn't reliably predict cardiac index. Okay, so your blood pressure, your map, what your blood pressure is doing doesn't really help you with your fluid status. And you've got to remember, why am I actually given the fluid? I'm trying to get oxygen to the cells. So it's oxygen delivery that you're thinking about. And so if you're giving your fluid boluses, um, you, you should be looking at how the baby looks, its color, all its numbers, but also what's the blood gas doing? Uh, am I getting a high lactate because the cells are struggling and they're producing lactic acid because I'm not delivering them enough oxygen? And you might consider, well, why is that then? Do I not have a high enough blood pressure? Am I underfilled or do I need blood? Do I need more oxygen carrying capacity? 
So in summary, I think which fluid, uh, I would probably summarize that as start with a crystalloid, think about moving to a colloid, how much fluid, start with 10 mil per kilo boluses, and reassess. And because this picture was on the website, I felt it would be appropriate to put it up here. <laughs> There are lots of references there that should all be available online. And thanks to Anne for doing the literature search. Does anybody have any questions?